And uh, we're moving to the last talk for this morning, Rufus May. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me, translator? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for what you're about to do. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, dialoguing process a little bit in the time I've got. Um, so, the, the idea of dialoguing with voices has very much come out of um, the work in the hearing voices networks around accepting voices and that many people find it helpful to negotiate with their voices and to uh, listen to what they say and try to find ways to uh, meet with voices, to compromise with them, uh, to find ways to live more in harmony. And um, the good news, I think, is that there's a growing interest in dialoguing because it's very countercultural, perhaps partly to do with Christianity, certain interpretations of Christianity, and partly which go back you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, and partly to do with rationalism. There's a real fear, probably in the West, more than any other place. There's a real fear of ghosts, of beings, of disembodied voices. Um, there's a real panic. I think Kenya said, a uh, previous Hearing Voices gathering, who's here, Kenya, said, um, when the community panics about voices, the voices panic. Um, so there's been a big reluctance I've experienced in the sort of last 10 years where I've been trying to promote more dialogical approaches. There's been a real resistance in mental health therapies, but there's this thing called avatar therapy where um, they're now role-playing, dialoguing with a voice using a computer-generated image. And it's got millions of pounds for research in the UK. And um, it's progress, I think. You know, it's, they're still very happy when the voices go away. That seems to be the objective. But at least they're starting to um, acknowledge that these are relationships people are struggling with uh, and they need help with. And you can, you can do a cheaper version of avatar therapy. Um, I don't know if I've got one here. Yeah, you can make finger puppets and you could talk to the finger puppet and practice different ways of relating. Or you could use other people and role play being more assertive with your voices. Um, but, you know, that wouldn't get millions of pounds of funding from the Wellcome Trust. Uh, anyway, there's compassion-focused therapy, and there people are talking a lot about dialoguing with different parts compassionately, even parts we, of ourselves we don't we struggle with. So that's a good thing. We could make links with these guys. Um, and recently, Dirk and I got invited to a cognitive behavioral conference, and that felt very healthy bridge. So I'm hopeful. Um, there's lots of simple ways to dialogue with voices. So voice dialogue, classically, you use chairs, and a person moves to a different chair and acts as a spokesperson for their voice. Um, but that can be quite um, threatening, because you're allowing a voice to completely take you over in some cases. Uh, and some people, that's too intimidating. But there are other ways we can journal. We can write messages to voices, and a person can write on behalf of their voice. So the person can dialogue with their voice or somebody else. I dialogue with my partner's voices like that, writing. She dialogues with my different parts through journaling too. We have, we have to make it equal. <laughs> and um, finger puppets I've already mentioned. So a friend of mine 
made finger puppets of his voices, got them to role play talking to each other. So he got his Jesus voice to talk to his more destructive, one of his destructive voices. Um, and there's drawing and artwork. I saw Rachel talking on the video about checking in with her voices using colours, drawing circles and, and feeling how they are and manifesting that with a, a drawing. Um, so there are lots of perhaps gentle ways to connect um, where people obviously people come to hearing voices groups where they're really often struggling with a very angry or controlling guilt tripping or um, or panicky voice paranoid so these, these voices are are difficult to dialogue with um, so we need to build uh, safety for that and strengthen your sense of self so maybe you role play um, assert being more assertive first Ro uh, role play talking about your feelings and needs first getting more clearer sense of who you are before you do this kind of work so it needs space and time and we can honor the occasion we can have flowers and cake for example that might be one way to honour the occasion. We'll create, create some time around it. Maybe do some relaxation beforehand, some grounding afterwards. So we, we kind of, yeah, it's a powerful process. We ran a day on dialoguing recently, helping people build confidence in dialoguing. And the three voice hearers who allowed people to try dialoguing with their voices, I think all three had headaches afterwards. So again, it's like, well, maybe we need to, think about how we create more time and space for it and, and do more relaxation around before and after. So this, <laughs> this may <laughs> not surprise some people, but distressing voices are beings who are in distress. So a voice that's really angry and domineering, underneath that, anger is it's not evil it's you when you're angry and domineering it's because you feel anxious um, so often when people first come to the hearing voices group they want to get rid of their voices they're very angry at their voices um, but I think this can help them be less scary learning that actually these these beings are in distress. Uh, Rachel, again, I'm quoting Rachel, on that video, she talked about Russian dolls, that underneath the big scary Russian doll, there might be an anxious Russian doll, and underneath that might be a more vulnerable child. And, and so we, we need images like that to, to get past the, the, the dragon that we've got to battle and get rid of, you know, like St. George, you know, stab it. You know, that's what we've been brought up to do. That's what we've been brought up to do with our enemies, is to battle with them, conquer them, you know. And I guess I'm more interested in a different approach to the, than that. that how do we um, realise that our enemies are suffering? And how do we find ways to look after ourselves and then look after their respect and find ways to honour their pain. So some of the, the one person who comes to our group finds of, uh, her voice is calmed down when she's outside in nature. So we've taken the hearing voices group to the park yeah? and we've dialogued with the voice said, you know, this is partly because of you, because you, you said you like this. Um, and he's like, all right then. You know, so <laughs> we're slowly building a relationship as a group with the with the person's angry voice, and she is too. She even went. She bought flowers for the first time. She gave a gift to one of her voices she'd always thought was an annoying little girl. She bought her flowers, and the voice said thank you. And for the first time, it wasn't sarcastic. So she started to see that she needs to become like the parent to her voices rather than. Uh, the resentful sibling, she needs to, um, and we need to support her in that process. We need to also help that parenting process. It's a community responsibility. Uh, 
So there's all kinds of ways that we can help voices that are in distress, and it, it needs to be done at the time the person wants to, and there is, there's no one recipe. Um, body work can be really useful um, to, to, to help look after distress, and um, so it, I think it's really important that we learn lots of different ways to look after distress. I mean, today this conference can be distressing, you know, we're talking about difficult things. We need to look after that. Create, create um, containers for it with, with exercises and um, listening to each other, and being there for each other. Okay. Now, I don't want to generalize, but... What we found through dialoguing with voices is that often voices that sound like abusers, who people might be very in, in a lot of conflict and have many years of conflict with the voice that sounds like an abuser, through dialogue, it turns out that the voices often say that they've had to take difficult experiences. So I think Sam talked about dissociation and... Um, one, one possible explanation might be that you know, when you're in an overwhelming situation, your, your main parts of you flee the situation, but one part gets left behind, and that part has to take the difficult experience, so, and that part split off from the rest of the team. And it might be angry that it, it split off and been neglected and had no one to talk to about what it went through. And so it might blame the person that, uh, for, for doing that, Rather than because that's the person they can blame, so they get and they they're very shaped by the the abuse or the the violence, so they they sound like the abuser because that really shaped them. As one voice said to me, "If you can't beat them, join them." <coughs> so, for one person recently, learning that this was why their voices behaved the way they did that helped her be a lot more compassionate to her voice and start to see a possible way they could live together, more um, compromising with each other and listening to each other. Um, now I want to, I think, I, I want to explain this community thing. I think, and the way to, I'm gonna try and do that is to make, to learn a bit from another culture. So. There's a culture called uh, the, the Gosa people in Mozambique. And um, in the last 10 or 15 years, there's been the emergence of uh, Gamba spirits um, in the community. And the, um, there was a civil war like, um, like there was in Rwanda. And so there's a lot of violence, a lot of um, people killing neighbours and lots of sex sexual violence as well. And um, it finished, it was from 1976 to 1992, and then it finished. And then there was a lot of denial, as people often do after difficult situations. Pe communities didn't talk about what had happened. So it's a way to cope. Thank you. Um, and the, uh, that's great. The, um, the spirits emerged in women who'd been often experienced quite a lot of violence. So um, some of this might be a bit sensitive, so take care of yourself as I talk about this. I think it will be meaningful too, but um, but yeah, some of the women that experienced quite a lot of violence started to have um, experiences um, where they were uh, possessed by these spirits who said they were spirits of um, dead men, men who died in the war, and those dead men had their own stories of trauma, and they would demand, they demand the community listens to what they went through and they will make the village, they will make the family sick if they don't get listened to. So they threaten to kill the family if the family doesn't talk about what happened. And um, one example of this is uh, 
um, Alatia, the example in this paper that I can send to anyone who wants it. Uh, Alatia um, had had a violent relationship, a marriage that hadn't gone well. She'd lost a child. She'd been born and died, and the husband had beaten her. He blamed her. And then um, people in the family got sick, and a healer came, a Gamba spirit healer came, and identified that there was a Gamba spirit possession. And um, the Gamba spirit um, came through Alatia and spoke. So it reminded me of voice dialogue. Um, and the Gamba spirit's demand to be married to the woman um, who's being possessed as repayment for the fact that their family was involved in the violence they experienced. So um, the, the Gamba spirit said his name was Antonio, he was a neighbor, and he'd been uh, abused and killed by the grandfather in the family. And the family needed to acknowledge this and repay by marrying Alatia to the Gamba spirit. This ceremony happened where this happened, the whole community knew about it, and then the Gamba spirit helps Alatia heal people. They become healers spirit and the person and help other people acknowledge um, and reenact um, violence that's been uh, buried under the carpet um, and the good news is is that Alatia can still marry somebody else um, and she met somebody she had more status now in the village as a healer she met somebody and they fell in love but there needs to be a secret meeting where he got permission from the Gamba spirit, from Antonio. This is a... So obviously there were some anthropologists who um, got a good relationship with this community and sat in on this and it was a great privilege to hear some of what happened um, there. And so this is a meeting where the uh, spirit is meeting with family members and the fiancé and the spirit says, I am the one who asked to meet with my rival so that I can say what I want and you can say what you want so that we can live well. I don't want my wife to marry a crazy person. Then everybody in the meeting, so there's family members, Alatia, or Alatia is allowing the spirit to speak through her so she's not present. But everybody there says, I omba, which acknowledges that they've heard and agree with, the, uh, with Antonio. They should, they should say Antonio rather than spirit, anyway. Um, the fiancé says, I don't have any problem. I don't beat women. The only difficult thing that has been happening was arranging this meeting. I don't have many things to say. As Antonio says, in the past, they ordered my wife to get married without consulting me, Iomba. I was already in her body, but it was before they knew that I, Antonio, was lodged in her body, Iomba. I do not accept that I suddenly see my wife already married. I am the one who chooses. I umba. When I suddenly realized we were two persons, I got very annoyed. I umba. The first person did not take good care of my wife. She wasn't even taking baths. She was dirty. I don't like to see my wife dirty. The mother says, yes, she was indeed suffering. Our first son-in-law did not take good care of our daughter. Antonio says... I, Antonio, do not like that, that. You don't know me. I can disturb your head if I want to. You will go crazy, and then you'll start walking in the bush, not knowing what you're doing. I will mistreat you. Iomba. If you threaten be or beat my wife, I will kick you. So this is to the fiancé. The mother says, are you listening, my son-in-law? The spirit is refusing such kinds of behavior. The fiancé says, in my house, since we love each other, I wouldn't beat a wife. She has to listen to what I say, and I must listen to what she says. Before this meeting, I had many doubts, and sometimes I even lost my appetite. Now that I've heard the words of the Spirit, I become very strong and motivated. The, uh, Antonio ends the meeting. Um, and the, the, he, he also demands that they, when they do their healing, they do it at the... Um, Alatia's house, not at the new husband, the new husband's house. He approves the marriage, and um, 
the, the presence of the spirit protects Alatia from um, further abuse and gets the, also helps the whole community acknowledge injustice that's happened in the past. Um, and I can see a role for voice dialogue in a similar way that we learn to listen to um, voices um, and respect them. Um, we can learn a lot uh, and be more honest and learn to be more in touch with many different parts of ourselves. Okay, so um, just think if I want to say anything else about and there are some similarities in in the um, Gongosa people when the, they do healing work. When Alatia does healing work with Antonio, Antonio gets the money. So he gets to decide how the money they earn from healing is spent. And in our Hearing Voices group recently, when we did the training and people got to practice dialoguing with people's voices, um, Richard, my co-facilitator, uh, his voice has got lots of different opinions on how he should spend the money, and he's he's trying to sort of negotiate with them uh, how they spend the money. So there's a similarity there. It was re really trying to sort of um, honour these experiences. So I, I hope there's a lot to cover in a short time, but um, I hope it's been interesting. If you want to find out more, looking up uh, voice dialogue, looking up the the paper I can send you. Um, and obviously the Hearing Voices Movement um, Intervoice website. So, um, thank you for listening.